online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey, everybody, welcome to The Hundred. Season 2, Episode 10, Survival of the Fittest After Buzz After Show. Yeah, big time. Um, and if you haven't done it already, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and all that. Uh, you can find us on AfterBuzzTV.com and also on iTunes and SoundCloud and YouTube. All the places you want to be, we are. Uh, and joining me today, me being Tari J. Miller, is Alexis Torres. Hi guys, I missed everybody. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Very special guest, Ricky Whittle. What? Hell you. Yeah. <laughs> and as always, Ben Bateman. What's up everybody, how's it going? Excited to be here, as always. <laughs> uh, and while we're doing the panel, uh, you can keep track of us on social media, specifically Twitter. We're gonna give out our Twitter handles in just a second. And you can also, we'll be following the hashtag ABTV the 100. Mm. All right, uh, starting at the end, since we started over here, Ben Bateman, what's your uh, Twitter? Ben Bateman Media. All right, Ricky, sir? Mr. Ricky Whittle. Nice. Alexis? A Torres 890. Cool. And you can find me at Tari J, that's T A U R I J A Y. All right, guys, so let's get general thoughts about the episode. First of all, I just want to—I almost want to just talk in his accent because I was like, "Send my Twitter handle," but he says "hit." I was like, "God!" I should have <laughs> <laughs> At least you energy. went first, <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, that was a great episode. That was really exciting. It was. Yeah. That was awesome. Oh, you're just saying that because I'm here, right? <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like we say that every episode. Yeah, but this you do. One... You do. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> it gets better and better. Yeah. It seems so good. That was a, a really sad ending. Really tragic. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking ending. I mean, but that's what keeps you coming back, though, yeah, right? Yes. <laughs> totally. It was real. It was real, you know? That's what we kind of wanted to establish and when we were on the show, that drugs is a real problem, you know? And I know we, we pitched the show as sci-fi, and there's a lot of stuff that's out there, and we have creating, you know, artistic license and things. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I remember sitting down with Jason Rothenberg, our producer, saying that, you know, this is something that we need to be, stay true to. You know, a lot of TV shows kind of brush things under the carpet mm -hmm. and you're, you're healed in, a, in an episode. But, um, you know, I think we just saw today that, you know, drugs is a real problem and that's something we're trying to respect and, and stay true to. Yeah. Yeah. You and know? the fans appreciate it. Yeah. Like, I think that's what people really like is the realism of this show and how, like, all the characters are affected in a way that is relatable. And it's also, I mean, even though they're in this land that we are not familiar with personally, mm. uh, they can still connect to each of these different characters. Yeah. I mean, Lincoln's, you know, one of the strongest characters out there for moral compass and, and for believing in right and wrong. And there you have this really strong, good, pure character succumb to his addiction. Drug you know? addiction. It's, it's, it's very real. And, and, you know, all credit to our writers and Jason for putting it out there and showing it's a real problem that hopefully, you know, can hit a few places, you know, out there and, and you know, make people more aware of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It uh, it was a very serious tone to a very exciting episode. It's a, a serious time to end it. But right. uh, where I mean, where do we start with it? What was the um, I? We'll just start with uh, some Camp Jaha stuff. Real okay, quick. okay. Um, so, I mean, we have the grounders marching in there, mm -hmm. and even all of all of the campers are like, "Who are right. these people? Yeah. They're going to take over as soon as they get here." Um, and there's friction from the very beginning. Yeah. Which, so, I mean, I didn't mean to cut you off no, there. I just, it was kind of nice to see to see how, because we're usually never really in Camp Jaha, really, when it comes to all the grounder yeah. stuff. It's usually always outside the fence. So I really like seeing the reaction of the fact of just, like, they're in our camp now. Right. What are we supposed to do? Like, like I don't know how I feel yeah. about it. Yeah. So it was kind of nice to see that. And also, like, 
obviously, which is a little bit later on, is seeing how their training is different from how Kane treat you know, all the guards are training with the guns and targets yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. I really like that you can really tell the difference in how like they look like barbarians, which that's what they are, but yeah. it, it really points them out. I love, one. I love, uh, we talked about this last week a lot, Indra and Lexa are like two of my current favorite characters. Mm-hmm. And Indra just struts around camp from the second she walks in, like she's just... <clears throat> owns the place is she pretty intimidating on set in real life uh adina is possibly the nicest woman you have ever met. <laughs> that goes to show what an incredible actress she is i mean from the walk you know her strutting down that corridor with kane you know mm-hmm. uh, henry and kusik um you know she's she's really in, in, engulfed in this character from mm-hmm. the way she speaks the way she holds herself the way she walks you know she's ferocious as as yeah. indra and uh you know, like I say, off off camera, she's absolutely all smiles. She's an inspirational woman. Um, I love her to death, and you know, long long may she continue doing what she does. She's she's fantastic. I she can't even awesome. imagine seeing those pearly whites because I'm so used to her just like scowling at the yeah, camera. Yeah. So it's, it would be weird to see her like and cut. Okay, who wants to get donuts? Like something like that, you know? I We're think. gonna see her in like some like interview panel, and she's gonna be wearing like a nice dress. Dress, and all yeah. Done up, right. And she's gonna be laughing. And she looks good as well. She's a I beautiful bet. woman. <laughs> she once, once we all get home, I mean, I've I've never felt so clean. It feels so good to wrap. <laughs> you know, the, the cast are always walking around in uh, in Vancouver and, and like. You know, restaurants and bars will look at you as if you're like, you know, some filthy, rotten thing. Because it's, you know, they really dig the dirt into your nails and in in every crevice. I mean, I will shower two, three times and still find dirt just coming down off out of nowhere. I'm like, I'm clean. Where (laughs) possibly could there be any more dirt? But you know, it comes from somewhere. They really get it in there. And so, like, you know, it's it's nice to finally wrap and and actually be clean. So I'm sure the girls are happy to have their their mani pedis and. You know, not get get all that grease and, and stuff out of their hair now, finally. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It's... Yeah, that was going to be my question was just, like, it, the costuming in the show is just fantastic. Like, so, we talk Katya about it every, every episode. Yeah. Katya oh, and her warrior. team are incredible. The worlds they've created just in, you know, visual uh, worlds, in just in clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've touched upon the Ice Nation now, mm-hmm. um, who we, we all see in the future. The different clans of Grounders, the different, um, you know... Arca's security. There's 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 a whole world of costume there that that Katya's created, and the, you know the team that she's got working behind closed doors. This the sheer volume of costumes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, the show started with the hundred, so already you need a hundred, you know, outfits yeah. there. And then she, as as we're kind of expanding this world, and we're kind of meeting new clans and new world, new 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 areas. You know, they're having to think up. New, new things and running them by Jason and, yeah. and you know it's just it's just growing and growing and growing and, and literally every department is just you know working its tail off and right. we we are blessed with an incredible crew and incredible departments you know from you know our costume and, and what makeup they're doing you know so if you see all these characters when they're not in full fatigues and, and all this business you'll be surprised I remember walking down uh, the high street in Vancouver and I apologize I'm so sorry but what this guy what? literally <laughs> this guy came this, this guy just came, came up to me just walked past me and said hey Lincoln I was like hey how you doing you're right yeah. and I carried on walking because I was shopping I was doing my thing and, and it happens you know pe- some fans say hi literally four or five seconds walking down the street I was like oh, he works on the show oh. <laughs> he's, he's one of the grounders but literally he's got face tattoos he's got fake long hair extensions he's muddied up but I didn't uh. recognize him because he's a good looking dude all clean and smiling he's like, hey Lincoln <laughs> I'm like hey enjoy your day and I carried on and literally four seconds later I was like oh do you run after him, or did you just apologize? no? I I apologized. <laughs> I apologized when I got to uh, when I got to work, and I and I saw him next. Um, but yes, uh, it's it's tough to to tell you know yeah how, right. how people really look without that, all though. our fantastic departments uh, doing their magic. How long? Yeah. How long does it take to to do like all the tattoos? And I mean, for you, oh, it's a little bit different. But I mean, I know for, for me, everybody for, else. For me, it's different. I mean, it, it can take you know it's. For, for, my, for myself, whenever Lincoln's shirt is off, it's, I mean, that's a six, seven hour process. We've talked about it a lot. We've talked about that's, it. Yeah. That's yeah. tattoos. That's, uh, you know, his body's a, a roadmap of scars and battles. Mm-hmm. And right. so, like, yeah. literally, I'll, I'll come in first thing in the morning with Tanya um, and uh, my incredible makeup. Uh, she's the head of the department. And, you know, then I'll see, you know, other random grounders come in and, and, and reapers and stuff. And then, you know, 
Bob or Marie will come in and they'll pop in, do their 30 yeah. minutes of hair and, and a little mm. bit of spray, a little bit of dirt and stuff. And then, anyway, I'll see, see you on set, Ricky. I'm like, yeah, okay. It's like six, seven, <laughs> six, seven hours. Like, <laughs> I'll see you later. Three, three more hours to go. Oh my oh God. My God. It's, it's, it's nuts, you know, but I mean, it takes a lot, you know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a machine and, and you know, we, we don't just, you know, walk around looking like that. They really do put, put it in. and. We could, like I say, we're very blessed with an incredible team. That's yeah. I was just curious. I just wanted to know because, I mean, it's well <coughs> yeah. done when you see it on camera. So yeah. I was like, it must take forever to get that done. It does, so. but we're getting quicker now. Yeah. I mean, okay, that's good. Like, I think we could possibly get Lincoln shirtless down to four hours. Wow. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, Tanya's, she's knocked off a couple of hours there. You know? Now she knows <laughs> nice. what she's doing. She knows the placement of all the tattoos. You know, even I do, I do the chest tattoo every now and then as well. She lets me do that. Nice. As nice. long as I don't mess it up, you know. What's well, less common? You're, you have your shirt on more often in season two. I've been, uh, I bet I've you been the fans so are so happy. upset. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't. Myself and Tanya have been really happy because then, you know, seven hours of makeup before you start work is intense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and plus, you know, it, it's nice that, you know, this season it's really really been about you know the, the work you know mm. I mean I mean not that the first season wasn't you know he, he just happened to be topless for a, a lot of it yeah the, he they, did they, they, <laughs> they, they, they open your character up like a, a whole lot so yeah so we open after we get Indra and she's struck yeah. down the hallway we kind of run into Jaha and he's he's sour grapes a little bit he's a little bit like ah, is this is gonna end badly I know how this is gonna go you know basically we're gonna die here we're gonna die here and I was mm. thinking his sour grapes attitude that's like it's that standard kind of stuff that we get from the show where we're like, mm -hmm. oh, this is really obvious. But now I'm learning it's the opposite is usually what ends up <laughs> happening or something that you totally don't expect. So what do we think is going to happen here? I mean, do we do we think he's right? Because they did a whole number on Jaha's character this episode. They, they did. A whole crazy direction. Which I liked because I felt like we were talking about it last week that, you know, we didn't really, we don't really get much of Jaha anymore yeah. throughout the season besides, mm -hmm. you know, he's always captured and then he's free and then he's captured and yeah. then he's free. So with this one, I, it feels like, that's what it feels like. I don't know if I'm the only one and I apologize if that's what it is, but that's what it just Every single time he gets on camera, he's either in chains, bloody, or he's walking around well, I really with liked, his hands behind his back. <laughs> I really like because it feels like often with Jaha, they, we've said this before, they give him this really predictable, altruistic kind of vibe where he's like, I'm going to sacrifice myself for the people. Yeah. I'm going to sacrifice myself for the people and does it over and over again. Right. This episode, they were just like, he was like, you know what? I guess I'm kind of a villain. I uh, I kind of need to reinvent myself and get forgiveness. There was a lot of forgiveness theme in this episode. Which I, I liked that one too. Which was nice. It was good to see. I liked, it actually made his character a little more interesting to watch as opposed to, like you said, just the kind of, I'm captured and I'm annoyed, but I'm altruistic. That's like the three notes. We well, get. I still felt like it was in the same vein because ultimately, Jaha, the core of his character is to do something for the greater good. And he's he said it many times throughout the episode, you know, this is for the greater good. And, the and greater good. he has a point. Like it's it's shown when uh, Kane at the end of the episode tries to get Octavia to spy, spoiler. Yeah. Um, I know, right? <laughs> he essentially echoes Jaha's concerns because it is a big issue that these grounders outnumber them by the thousands and they have no way to defend themselves mm. and so what does happen to the alliance when they are not striving for the same purpose of course I'm always hoping that it's like okay we found our common goal we go through the mission if it's successful great if it isn't obviously then I think it will be a little bit more high strung after that but right. I feel, I mean, not to get too much into predictions, but I do feel like something's going to go wrong and it's just going to ruin everything, hmm. personally. And then if it does go well, I feel like they are going to take over the camp because they're like, well, there's not that much of you. And I mean, right. it would be kind of strange to see the Grounders take over because I feel like they don't need the arc, you know? Like, yeah. there's really nothing they need that's in there. But at the same time, I can't see them missing the opportunity to take over. You haven't really... Ricky. Uh, I was gonna say you haven't really interacted with uh, Jaha's character in the show very much. You, you guys really haven't had a lot of screen and time together. And that's something I'm so upset by because I have been a fan of Isaiah Washington really? since his Grey's Anatomy days. Like this guy is for me just has presence. It's just in the makeup chair, just chilling with his eyes closed. I'm still in awe of this <laughs> man. The first time I met him, I, I was at, um, it was in the, um, the the hotel that we were staying at in the first mm -hmm. season. Um, because obviously we didn't, our characters never, never ever met. We were never in the same days, never mind the same scenes. Um, so we kind of just passed, sh you know, passing ships in the night, and uh, we, I bumped into him, and literally we just dropped straight into like a father-son dynamic. You know, I was in, like, he is an incredible man. Like intelligence, passion, he is just like 
an incredible human being. You know, the stuff that he does off camera is probably by far more incredible than what he does on camera. You mm -hmm. know, he's, he's, he's affiliated with so many charities and he, uh, right now he's, mm. he's fighting the bowler and, and, and really putting, uh, you know, s uh, numerous things together uh, regarding that and, and other charities. And then on screen, I mean, you saw you know him working with uh, Richard Harmon, who plays Murphy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're seeing a new dynamic there of two kind of you know anti-heroes, yeah. uh, if you will, kind of looking out for themselves. You mm -hmm. know, they've been turned upon by their own people in prison, as as Jaha said, and um, now you know they're off on their own. Forgiveness. That's uh, that's the theme. We're about thing. to see their thing, their journey. And I'm really yeah. glad that they decided to to give them kind of some sort of. Uh, comparison and kind of some yeah. common, you know, interest, and I really liked their kind of their relationship together because I never fantastic really fantastic chemistry. Yeah, I never thought about putting yeah. Murphy and Jaha together ever. He and calls him John. I, we haven't heard anybody. <laughs> you were going crazy. You were like, yeah. "Who's this John? Who is this John?" Who's we ever heard? Of? He's like occasionally it's like John Murphy, but I feel like that's like. The name John has been said in this show in like three times in two seasons. Right. I don't right. even remember that. I, yeah, I, maybe not. Maybe this I love the first that. one. I love those little touches, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, I've got numerous friends that I I still don't know their real names. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be like, "Wow, well, Simo, isn't it? Simo? You mean you mean Dave? Who's Dave?" Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so, but I like I like those little touches that you know that yeah, Jaha it, it would. Gave it, it gave it know, a father. Address him as something. as you know John. Yeah. So yeah. Here's a question for you guys. Uh, when they they're going over the thing and he's like, I knew your father, and he tells the story about the meds and stealing it. Now I remember that Murphy told a story to Raven about it's the same story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember it that clearly. Were there? Do you guys notice there were differences in details? Was he like maybe lying to Raven to some degree to make himself look better? Or was it was the same story. I, think, I believe it was the same I, story. Yeah, I feel like it was the same story. I don't remember mm -hmm. there being much difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if there was, I just assume that maybe he just doesn't remember it as well. Yeah, Murphy's or, only had the addition of his mother's perspective, where she started resenting him and mm -hmm. being abusive from that point. Yeah. So mm -hmm. okay, but so he talks about uh, his dad stole the drugs because he was sick, yeah. so his dad mm -hmm. gets floated. <clears throat> yeah. And then, but how does Murphy get in trouble on the arc? What does he do? I think he was just doing petty thefts, wasn't he? Was that I it? I believe so. I can't remember. I feel like maybe he said that he got in trouble for the drugs or something like that. I can't. I maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, someone let, yeah. Jill. Remind, let, <laughs> us yeah. <laughs> let us know. Let me know because I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back and watch the season. Yeah, I don't remember. I have to look into. Pull out that. my scripts. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys find it interesting that Jaha like they gave him a little bit of a villain role? He was like. As, as, as Murphy was talking to him and saying you've done all these things and you've killed all these people essentially mm -hmm. and there's all these you know, all these kids that just resent you because you just killed their parents it, were you sort of like oh man Jaha kind of he, he's kind of a dick I guess like I mean maybe he was doing what he I, had to do but like again I, it's perspective yeah I mean, you know, it, it's Death. it's you know you can only please some of the people some of the time and at the time in, on the arc you know he was trying to you know trying to keep everyone alive or, yeah. or the, the majority you know and so it, again, it was it was for the greater good, you know, sacrificing a few for for the many. Um, yeah. Which he brought up. Which he he, he brought up and, and has continued to bring mm -hmm. up, and it's and it's kind of a theme on the show, you mm -hmm. know. It, it's it's that moral compass again that Jason and our writers like to throw in your face, and it's uh, you know it it creates controversy. You know, what would you do? You know, yeah. would yeah. would you do this? Would you do that? You know, would you save your loved one uh, if it meant many more people dying or would you sacrifice your loved one if it meant saving hundreds you know That's this, why this is oh. you know something that touches you here as well as mm -hmm. as here you know the head or heart you know which which do you follow and unfortunately for Jaha you know you see it, it affects him mm -hmm. you know right. it, years later or however long it's been it affects him every he, rem he said himself he remembers every single one um, but it's something he had to do yeah. yeah, but even if he says that, he was like the chancellor. Like, <laughs> that's like, yeah, but even if he doesn't, yeah, mean he it. doesn't really so care. What, what, care. What, what would he say? What would he say? What would he say? He doesn't care about any of us. He didn't say that, but I'm judging you on your action. <laughs> I'm just drinking vodka here, guys. That guy's a this dick. Is good I'm like, I don't we, think we, this is water. We have water. I don't, know. I don't know where you guys found we the vodka. We got vodka over this side. It's good. It's good. <laughs> So the the end of this first little this first little bit is that we have uh, oh Octavia and Indra. There's a little bit of a team up after the, like one of the more badass Which is awesome. fights we've seen right. on this show ever. She challenges a grounder in a training. Can I just say that oh. that was possibly one of the worst nights of weather 
in the whole shoot. I was going to ask season. about that. I said I was going to wonder if it was actual weather. Like or if it was they worked man-made. into the night, into the early hours of the morning, and the Just weather pouring. was horrendous. And that <sighs> scene was a lot longer as well. That was cut down for uh, compliance and, and censorship and all that business. Um, really? Wow. Um, that was a really long scene, and they worked on that with our, our great stunt choreographer uh, Marshall Kim. Just literally, just worked it, worked it. They rehearsed, and the weather yeah. kicked their butts. Yeah. You know, um, but for myself, I think it just added. You know, yeah. the, 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 yeah. we're, we're very fortunate that that the weather adds. Like it's it's like a new it's, it's another character on mm-hmm. the show, and and the worse the weather is, the more epic the show looks. And I think that scene um, would still look incredible. But just that whole mud, rain, and, and terrible conditions, it just made Octavia just look like, you know, she was getting her butt handed to her. And, right. and she yeah. was, you know, and we're seeing her journey, you know, come from that, we're back, bitches! <laughs> yeah. You know, a spoiled schoolgirl to, to, you know, this little yeah. little warrior that she's she's becoming, you know, she's now almost officially uh, injured second, you know, and this is, this as Lincoln said in, in, in the show, you know, he, he saw this strength, she was already strong. Yeah, uh, Lincoln's just been, you know, fortunate enough to be able to help coerce that out, and she's becoming the person that she always was. Yeah, it's coerce. Not, well, yeah. You know, okay. We talked, <laughs> we talked at length uh, when we saw the Clark Lexa fight in the, earlier in the season that that mm-hmm. was like we were like, can you think of another time you've ever seen two women in a primetime or like network show just going at it like that, like just mm-hmm. fists, like on the ground, like just, and I couldn't think of one example. I can't think of the last time I saw a girl and a guy go at it like just straight up girl on the ground getting kicked in the stomach like that's yeah. intense stuff and I had this moment where I was thinking oh man like they're gonna make her really strong and she's gonna kick this guy's butt and I was like this is gonna be so stupid she weighs really? like a third of her- I was not thinking that at all yeah. I was like she's gonna get her ass handed well, okay. to her she, she takes the first hit she's on the ground you're like, and then she rises up you're like oh she's gonna get him or she's gonna stab him but then she just gets the snot kicked out of her no and you're and you're like oh that's it's no real way. it's classic yeah. it's totally real yeah. like, it's- training respect moment yeah that's yeah. exactly what I thought I was like she was gonna get pushed into the dirt and Indra's gonna be like Alright, okay. It's awesome and that's where the CW's going, you know, we're keeping it real and, and we're, like we're allowed to go you know, go down those dark, dark paths and, and you know, Octavia's journey is incredible. It, mm-hmm. has. it really is fantastic. Really you good. know, you're kinda of seeing her and Lincoln come from either end of the spectrum to try and basically we're meeting in the middle where Lincoln's becoming more acclimatized to the arcas and, and you know, she's learning more ways of the ground to, right. to be kind mm-hmm. of you know, they're taking the best parts of each culture and, you know, almost kinda you know, Jason's always put it as, as that we're the bridge between the two worlds. Yeah, yes. I was just exactly. thinking that. So if if these two can you know work together, then it, you know maybe there's hope for the, the whole people. Um, I also love the uh, Bellamy Big Brother to right. the boyfriend talk. Uh, I loved good. that. I was like yeah. Belkin. <laughs> yeah. me, me, me and Bob, me and Bob were really happy with that. You know, we've 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 worked with each other before, um, but obviously you know it's it's something that we've been wanting to do. You know, when they when they ask you know who do you want to work with more and stuff and, and mm. in season one you know he was kicking my butt when, when I was being tortured and, and we had a lot of fun on set <laughs> I but, forgot all uh, about that <laughs> you know I mean Lincoln he, he's over it you know he's, he's, he's had worse scars um, yeah. but it's, cool. it's good to see you know more more dynamics coming coming to the forefront and you're seeing you know uh, a little bit of backstory for Lincoln and that respect uh, and again more more of a journey from, from Bellamy and Lincoln where mm-hmm. they first started where they were kind of opposite ends you know Link, uh, Bellamy's seen that passion in, in, in Octavia when she was hunting for Lincoln mm-hmm. uh, when he was being captured several times that uh, you know she she hunted him down she was she was passionate about him she saw how much she cared uh, about him how much how willing and how far she was willing to go to get him back and then he's seen obviously uh, Lincoln's uh, view on, of Octavia as well and, and how passionate and strong that he's been and, and you know willing to go against his own people mm-hmm. you know he's seen that that love is real now um not sure how friend friendly he'll be after after uh, <laughs> that ending but yeah. uh but you know it's it's again like i say it's it's the writers keeping it real you yeah. know um although i'm not too sure what lincoln and bellamy could have done otherwise right. no, because the whole sense. the whole plan was basically Virginia you know what yeah, you know like grab the grab the red he'll sneak in the door uh kill every, he'll kill lincoln will kill everyone you get in the door but the door was closed straight away so yeah. We didn't really have a plan B. Right. <laughs> we, we didn't think that far. We were like, sweet, we'll just, you know, I'll kill everyone. You run in the door, 
We'll, we'll sort this. We'll Matt, like, Matt immediately made a gun. this decision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Door shut straight away. We're like, well, that was awkward. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Escalated quickly. I mean, Tari called out, I think, like, episode one or two of this season. He was like... Genius. Because I, I was saying, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Because at the very beginning of the season, I was saying, I was like, man, what's the point of the Octavia Lincoln storyline? I was like, this is, I was like, this is a romance thing. I was like, this doesn't fit. I was like, I don't understand what, what they're, they're doing. And Tari was Ooh. like, well... She's gonna stick around because she's gonna bridge the gap between the grounders and the people. And that's this guy. Well, yeah. I mean, nailed it. Being, <laughs> I think what you're saying is they were being underutilized. Like they were towards the background and they're fan favorites and mm. stuff. Yes. Um, and so it, it made sense because they are having that Venn diagram of like he's learning their culture and and she's learning the grounder culture. So it only makes sense that if they're all going to work together, this Romeo and Juliet, Beauty and the Beast uh, relationship would be the means to do it. Yeah. Um, well said. Yeah. Very well so. said. I can't, <laughs> I can't even think of anything else. Uh, I definitely, before we keep going with, with anything else, I definitely want to bring up Clark because yeah, well, her, that whole story section with, uh, how do you pronounce it? Um, oh, uh, it's Pana. Uh, Ponya. Yeah. Pona. 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 Okay. Pona. Pona. The lost, <laughs> the lost monster reincarnated. Pretty much. Right. Mighty Joe Young. Because I just want to know, I don't know how the if the fans were expecting it, but I was not expecting it to Nor be a gorilla. I, I. Want it, I wanted it to be like a puma or a lion or something. Or some something. Like savage knuckle blade beast. Yeah, right. something, you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, because I mean, after all that, I was thinking like something just extremely ferocious which again a gorilla can be but it just you, I mean was the gorilla not fero- no, ferocious no it was I mean, that, the that scariest thing, thing in the world like 50 meters in the air yeah. and like was 12 bullets to the and dome like, and survived yeah. and, still, and I'll just let's say no animals were hurt in the filming of this episode <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it was just yeah the more you know uh, but it was just it was just strange how that whole thing was handled but we should we should probably talk about well, it behind, a little behind the scenes yeah, it's um, right. oh yeah go ahead go ahead this was actually a, an idea from the boss man, uh, Mark Pedowitz. Um, really? He said to Jason, our producer, you know what people like? Animals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he did it like that with a wink and the gun. I'm going to I'm gonna remember I'm, that forever. I'm thinking he was just in his office. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. He's, 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 he's awesome. I love him. Um, but he was just like, yeah, like the Godfather. People like animals. Jason's and like, so Jason's Jason's like, like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, so he went back to the writers, and and you know I think I think they played with lots of various things, and then our, our incredible FX team Zoic and um, and our sound team of Charlie Crutcher and everyone at Warner came up with this incredible you know visual. Yeah. Um, they won uh, a nomination, an Emmy nomination last year for season one, and you know how they didn't get nominated this year because they really are pulling out incredible yeah. work on yeah. on TV budgets. You know, mm-hmm. I mean this isn't. You know, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, where we've got millions to spare. Yeah. You know, we're we're knocking out a TV show on on a much smaller budget, and what they are creating in in post was was incredible. And, and no fair fair play to Alicia and, and uh, Eliza for running around and staring at a big screen, and uh, and our director Dean White just going, Arr! <laughs> Arr! <laughs> he's coming after you. He's grabbing your leg. He's grabbing your leg. <laughs> I mean, Dean White's scared. We should have just put him in a, in a big green monkey suit or you know, whatever, because he's a huge, he's a good, he's a he's a great guy. He's our director and, and a producer, and um, you know, he's so passionate and he's fantastic, and he and he really would have helped uh, more than I think any other director in in those moments. But yeah. I mean, it's tough to work against nothing. You yeah. know, yeah. Just, you're just playing with your imagination. It's like imagine it's like King Kong. It's a huge monkey, <laughs> ape, gorilla thing, and he's coming at you. And I'll be like. Okay, yeah. but you know, Eliza killed it. You know, Alicia killed it, and uh, the the Clark and, and Lexa storyline was was fantastic. That was yeah. awesome. So, well, so before before they find the monkey, uh, <laughs> this whole thing, gorilla, hey, yeah. silverback. <laughs> it's, it's, if it was a monkey, man. they could have been friends. Could have been like oh, ancient silverback. Like, we open. Uh, oh my word. <laughs> we, we open up in. Uh, I mean, I guess well, they're, they're in some sort of like a war it's bunker. It's a strategy right? meeting. So yeah. they're having a strategy meeting, and one of the grounders, Quinn, uh, is very hostile towards Clark. We find out that his brother was killed in the Ring of Fire. Um, oh, I love her Consistency, line. writers dropping these dregs, back, going back to the season one. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, carry on. No, no. Like, it's I'm true. Just, just picking up my piece. It's called a callback. <laughs> it's called a callback. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so... 
Uh, he goes out because he uh, he can't do the alliance. Clark goes out to get some air because she still feels guilty about it. Mm-hmm. And then he tries to kill the crap out of her. Kill uh, the crap out no, of her. No, that's literally what that was. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Um, and in the midst, we find uh, Burn, Burn, Burn yeah. is dead. With her uh, arm torn off. Her arm ripped off. Just gnarly. If you guys were in the viewing room with me, I was just like, ah, what? <laughs> it was hilarious. It was Your reaction yeah. was, was wonderful. I was just sitting there going, there's going to be an arrow, maybe like a right. few. Like, uh, she might have a dagger around her. Uh, oh yeah. my gosh, she's got no arm. <laughs> was, oh my God. That was literally what it was. And yeah. it scared me because, you know, from the first season, we always talk about this. I'm just like, random spear. That's what I was hoping. And no, her <laughs> arm was completely off. And I was just like. Yeah. I can't. I can't. It was sweet. It's really yeah. awesome. Best way it was to do gory that. and gnarly. It's surprising to all of us. Every time, you guys are awesome. Oh yeah. yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah. Strategy meeting, and yeah. she's scared. This guy's chasing her, and uh, I just want to say the first thing I noticed, and this is like uber uber nerd moment. Oh no. Uh, but it opens up, and she's like, Clark's talking to Alexa, and she says she's like says something like such and such commander. She calls her commander, mm-hmm. and it just for me it just like invoked all these like sweet war movies. War and like you know wars and jungles and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It's, she's never called her commander. She usually calls you, her Alexa. Yeah, you she were such her, a dork. She called her commander, and it's free. I was like, oh, this, and I was like, God, the war tone here is just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see him go to war. I was yeah. like, the bunker, the strategy, and we have to get in. I don't know. I was totally into it. Is I'm it, on board. Is it weird that the first thing I thought of when I saw their strategy, I was like, man, I haven't played Risk in such a long <laughs> it's, time. It's weird because she's that's actually what they were playing. That was like, <laughs> they even started thinking about the mountain men. They were just playing Risk, you know. And I got Europe. Quinn, Quinn got upset. He was like, I'm losing again. She Can said, we have a hundred uh, uh, Risk. Risk <gasps> would be amazing. I mean, Best merchandising right game there. Yeah. Ever get on it right now? <laughs> it's, uh, consumer products. Get on there. You thought of risk it's funny i immediately thought of admiral akbar like <laughs> it's because it's, like, it's, oh. it's, 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 it's a trap it's a trap it's a trap it's a trap star wars, star wars okay yeah. okay <laughs> wow yeah i know I'm yeah really that's nerds. why i was like you're such a dork oh my uh, word um but, but anyways there's a giant ape chasing them <laughs> We find so out, <laughs> yeah. So they all get trapped in this what we realize is an old zoo. Which uh, he pointed out that I didn't even see that it says zoo on the rock right in front, right? Yeah, I, com- it's, it's I completely missed that. Right, right, towards the beginning when they when they find them, themselves in the in the uh, area in the arena, um, you can see uh, if if you look carefully, I'm sure our fans spotted it. Uh, yeah, it's, I, can't, I don't know whether it said the actual name of the zoo, but it said something zoo uh, yeah. whether it was something state zoo or the actual place but uh, I really hope it's again. a state zoo because I want to know where they are really mm. I mean I know uh, that they shoot in Canada but I want to know <laughs> so bad <laughs> well I mean there's this you know uh, my village Lincoln's village is is Tondisi and we all know what, what that's from do we enlighten us I was like wait a minute well, there, was, there was a signpost uh, in the previous episode that they walked past what, well, I mean, <laughs> with, with, what? with the front scribbled off what? <laughs> All right, everybody, what? we watched that episode. I know that the Lincoln Memorial was, up, was right? there. Yeah, I, know I knew that. Just dropped some and knowledge. And we know that it's on the East Coast. So, yeah, there, I knew there, it was on I the East Coast. I don't know if it was burnt out or something, but, I mean, that's Washington, D.C., Oh, right? my God. Right. My mind. So, the only thing left is Ton, D.C. Ah. Uh, nice. See, they dro- that's that's amazing, genius, am- right? Well, you said Tundisi. Well, I was thinking like T-U-N-D-I-S-I. You but mean, that's how the ground is pronounced it, like, because that's all we know. Tundisi. Like I never lovely thought it was Tundisi. 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 I gotta say more like Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Speak Tundisi. Tundisi. <laughs> Are you able to do like the, the uh, you go between the two accents like flawlessly like that? I mean, I wouldn't say I was flawless, but I, I can kind of do something with it. You can go back and forth. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, shall I do the rest of it like this? Or? No, 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 and then Lex is just ruthless, and she's just yeah. She kills Quinn. Um, well, no, not up. completely. She sliced the back of his sliced leg. Sliced the back of his leg. She and sacrifice, left him to die. Sacrifices him yeah, so that they can get away. It Again, like, it's every every woman man for themselves. Yeah, it was like a Walking yes. Dead moment, just like yeah, so, zombie bait. <laughs> survival of the fittest, yeah. if you will. So they kind of tease at the end of this whole thing. They get away from the ape, 
and uh, they they tease for a second. She says, you know, there's a reincarnation aspect here. Lexus says to Clark, mm-hmm. yes. you know, once I die, my my spirit will find the next commander. Mm-hmm. And they tease you for a second. We all have the same thought. Oh, Clark's going to be the next commander of the Grounders, right? It's kind of a stretch. But then, we already talked about Octavia. They really get into, like, it's, it's probably actually going to be Octavia. And maybe we're supposed to wonder, but I think it's got to be Octavia. It makes way more sense than yeah, that, I right? Yeah, can't, I can't really see Clark becoming the new commander. I mean, I feel like she fits the bill, but I personally can't see it. Yeah. You know, I can definitely see Octavia after what she's gone through and how much she's grown as a, as a character. You know, I just, I can see it. I'm hoping Lincoln will get yeah. through it and they they could be together right. but uh, that's just be wishful thinking <laughs> do, you think, do you think marie has the has the like chops and strength to to like lead the grounders in the show like be that strong marie character? is I one of so. the most incredible women you will ever meet really she is completely conflicting against her appearance she is this tiny beautiful little thing she's 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 fantastic <laughs> and yet she can she rides harleys horses wow. she does most of her own stunts she wow. kicks butt the first time we ever met she was two hours face down in the dirt uh for our original meet when uh, when That's lincoln's right. on the top of the hill mm-hmm. after she um falls down the cliff um and you know I, I i saw like a rat or something like run past her head and i was like um <clears throat> murray there's it's <laughs> <laughs> a rat <laughs> she's like Oh yeah, I saw it run past earlier. I'm like, she's so badass. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Marie, you know. She's she's so hardcore, and and I wow. think you know, you, it really comes out in in her performance as Octavia. She's, you know, she's kicking ass and taking names, and and you know, she was she was there for hours, you know, like I say, doing that scene, doing that that whole fight scene, and and really going through it. You know, she's her body is in in pieces, the bruises and stuff that she gets from mm-hmm. really putting herself. Through, through. I mean, all the cast do, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know, from Bob Eliza, everyone, um, you know. But Marie is is has definitely got the chops to do whatever she wants to do, whether it be uh, Lincoln's Juliet, or whether it be Leader of the Grounders, or whether it be you know something else. Sure. You, I mean, whatever, whatever you think, whatever you think she can do, she will do it. Well, she, I've been yeah. very she's excited. Incre- she's an incredible girl. I've been very excited about the development of both the two of your characters this season, and I, I mentioned it last week and the week before, just. Like I said, at the beginning of the season, I was sort of like, what's the purpose? And then I've liked how, even though your relationship hasn't gotten more screen time since the beginning, the significance of it has, it's much more weighted. Like when you guys have scenes together, or they, they'll talk to her, they'll talk to you, it's like every time, like, oh, this matters, this is a part of the plot that I care about now. And I, you've become like two of the better characters, I think, this season. Yeah, I they've, agree. They're, they've they're really pretty developed. much there to kind of explain a lot of stuff. Like, I, I, I feel Lincoln is kind of like your only way of finding things out. In season one, it, like only he would know about Joby nuts turning, you know, giving people you know, right. illusions and yeah. things like that. So, you know, through Lincoln, you're able to find out. And even with with Finn, um, you know, <laughs> it was only through Lincoln that you would know what was going to happen to him, what the grounders were going to do. Um, you know, and then with with Octavia, you know, we we kind of, she it was kind of her turn today to say, you know, grounders aren't allowed to touch guns because the mountain men will wipe out the village. Um, you know, so we, we're very much uh, explanatory characters sometimes, but um, you know, we we are more than that, and and we have, you know, it it obviously storylines kind of vary and, and go they go their separate ways, and they kind of they're they're liquid, you know, they they don't they're not. They don't just stay on course. It depends on how the writers are going and, and where they where they where they tend to, to drift off to. But um, I love my scenes with, with Marie, and, and I think any scenes with Octavia and, and Lincoln together, um, they do have that, that great chemistry and that, that that real love. You know, Jason says it's the one real relationship in the show that's romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, and you've seen them make making immense sacrifices for each other um, constantly, uh, and they will continue to. But. Um, you know, I've I've always said that the great thing about our writers is that, you know, they give the give the audience what they what they uh, what they need and not what they want. Yeah. Uh, right. And everyone wants Link Tavia to be together. So what what are they going to do? They're going to split them up. Yep. You know, they're going to constantly separate them, give them both you know, vicious dark journeys, and you know, um, just watch them kind of try and forge their way back to to each other. 
but they're giving us depth when you're separated which is just going to make it when you do see when you do find each other again in the show that moment as well as being posted on every social media platform in the world (laughs) a million times uh is going to be a big moment and i yeah. think they're they're trying to wait it that way well is, see, season cool. one we, all our scenes were together yeah you know yeah. you never saw lincoln without octavia you know um and then season two you know we have been separated and we've you know like you say they have built that depth and those layers uh individually um so that when they do come together you know more about them and you know that their, their passion is 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 there mm-hmm. yeah um can i i i would like to ask you go um, for it because <laughs> uh, we you've mentioned dark journeys. Uh-huh. So when when you were reading the script and you found out that you were essentially going to become a, a futuristic heroin addict, like <laughs> yes. what were what were your thoughts in that regard? Um, I was told at San Diego Comic Con by Jason Rothenberg, um, and I was excited, you know, it, and um, you know, it's 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 an honor to play something so real and you want to do it justice and like I said before it's it's a real problem um, it's sci-fi but and, and we have created uh, artistic license and stuff but this is something that's real and, and you know um, I, I did all my I had to go and do my research and, and I watched films I watched documentary heartbreaking documentaries oh, about the, the the struggle you know being real um, and like I say you have a strong true pure character like Lincoln uh, who can just turn I, I, I watched many documentaries where you know, you've got successful businessmen, you've got honest, good people, you've got religious people, you, you've got all people from all walks of life succumb into this addiction that they just cannot stop without without help and, and those support groups. And you know, it's it's something that our writers are, have maintained on the show and, and, and tried to keep it as true as possible. And uh, like I said before, hopefully it, it does raise awareness that you know those struggles are real and if there are people out there you know suffering that you know it's they shouldn't be ashamed they should try and find help they should find people who can help them and find their support groups and and you know work with it work through it together because it will not just go away right it's not something that you can just get over you know and so um, you know with Lincoln it's not something that he just got over um, it's something that uh, when I spoke to Jason, uh, we we agreed this is this is something he will fight in season ten if he survived. Um, you know, if if he walks past a syringe with red in it, he would have to think twice about walking past. Um, it wouldn't just be like, no, oh, there's the drug. You know, it's it's something that he would have to think about. And so, um, you know, I was I was very blessed to have that kind of really dark storyline. In in season one, it was very much a physical torture that Lincoln went through um, yeah. with uh, with Bellamy and. And, uh, and Raven. Um, season two is very much an emotional uh, torture uh, for many of the characters uh, this season. Uh, I think the first season was all about the physical dangers that they faced on Earth and, and what could harm them, whether it be the weather, whether it be uh, the grounders, or even animals. Um, and then season two, you know, I think everyone's kind of going through this dark right. you know, moment, you know, with, with Raven and, and her injuries and, and, you know, Bellamy. Everyone's going through their, 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 their inner demons. Sure, and uh, it's it's very interesting that you know the writers are keeping it fresh every every season. Yeah. So the, for a quick refresher, what happens here is that we open up and it's we have the bro moment where where Lincoln is talking to Bellamy and he's you know the interaction. My sister, how did you know? You saved her life. You'd never met her. She was strong and all this. And they go through the woods and then obviously they they get in with this plan that goes haywire. This is where we see the the tragic scene we're referring to, where Lincoln uh, essentially relapses and gets injected with red heroin or whatever it is yeah. <laughs> uh, at the last the last moment of the episode so uh, this was definitely this was the realest ending like real in the sense of like heavy yeah. heaviest yeah. ending of an episode so far for mm-hmm. sure it definitely that the, the parallel with real life was like oh my god like, I yeah. feel this is... I feel like um, a majority like ever since the Finn's death I feel like it's been always kind of there's this like this lingering heavy you know yeah. tone since yeah. then because we had to deal with you know Finn dying obviously and then obviously dealing with Clark's uh, guilt and how it was mm-hmm. tormenting her from inside out and then now we're dealing with, with Lincoln so I feel like I've always liked the fact that the writers can just keep you on your toes and yeah. I did notice that the first season was mostly just 
kind of dealing with just the environment yeah. and a couple other things and then this this whole season of season two is just like ripping at your heartstrings the whole time yeah well, i love uh, the story too about yeah. when when the man fell to earth and lincoln fed him for three days as a boy and then exactly. he has to kill him it was like again that's what we're talking about they're giving depth to these characters that we didn't have before uh and it's it's just making it made that decision at the end that he makes so much more weighted you know the character more uh, mm-hmm. So that's got to be a lot of fun for you. That mm-hmm. they're even though you know the stories, I'm sure, I'm sure the, the early scripts and the descriptions are a little more clear to you. But they haven't put it all on paper necessarily in an episode. Yeah, I mean, we 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 do know a lot more than is actually shown on screen. Right. Um, even various storylines throughout season one that didn't make it to script or never never made it to 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 air. Um, you know, even in this episode, there was various scenes cut. Um, with information or action or whatever for various various reasons I mean not just performance or storyline wise there's, there's all sorts of things going on so um, we do know a lot and and I've spoken to Jason about you know Lincoln's background and <clears throat> you kind of you kind of come up a character with and you kind of until you're you're given these you know nuggets of information you 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 kind of create your own world you create your own storyline so that you can give yourself that depth right and, and you know why am I? Which is why our, our, our so-called villains um, mm-hmm. have their own perspective. No one's evil in in our show. You know right. the mountain men are really just trying to save their own people, and the way they're going about it is not necessarily, you know, uh, the nicest way. You know they're sacrifice, sacrificing someone else. But I mean, like I said with Jaha, they're, they're sacrificing forty-eight people yeah. mm-hmm. to save their whole colony. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so for them, that's not much of a sacrifice. The way they're doing it is kind of barbaric mm-hmm. and and draining people's blood and things. It's right. it's it's not great, but they're just doing it for you know, and Survival. that's and that's what those those actors are, are working towards. You know, they're not just oh, I'm the bad guy. I'm gonna play it really bad. It's like no, I have a purpose. I'm to I'm gonna save my people. So so Dante, so Cage, you know, I'm gonna save my people, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm torturing you. That's why I'm putting you through this. That's why I need Lincoln to become a reaper to protect me while I do this, so mm-hmm. that my people can then go to Earth and walk across, you know, green fields and, and breathe the air. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, and once again, it's, it's just our writers and Jason, you know, creating that those layers, that depth sure. um, that you'll see continue throughout this season as well. So I think uh, I'd like to get to some of these fan questions. Really. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. we uh, we tweeted out earlier to the fans and asked them, you know, what would you, I think my question is, what would you do if you were sitting next to Ricky Whittle? And I saw some of those. They're very this. rude. I'm sitting next to <laughs> I'm sitting, I think some of them were like, uh, can I have a foot massage? Have you ever drank liquor out of a shoe? Like there was what? what? Yes what? and yes. What? <laughs> we're not, what, uh, <laughs> what do you like for breakfast? These are, but we're not going to do those ones. We're, we're going to do some of these ones over Chocolate. here. Chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. lightning round him. So yeah, yeah real quick. So uh, lightning round. At Danik Boo wanted to know uh, who is your favorite actor actress to work with in the show so far, and do you have a favorite scene you filmed? Oh, that was one of my questions. Love working with Marie. <laughs> um, loved working with Bob in this. Um, my favorite scene. Favorite scene. Favorite scene. On the and spot, man. I know it's tough. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd, 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 I'd go to season one. Um, and it was the scene where Lincoln first spoke. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's a good scene. I love where, that scene. Where I, I, I held uh, Octavia's hand and, and, and I spoke. Um, as, as an actor, you, you, sometimes you have these moments where the world disappears. And that day, I just remember, you know, the DOP had lit it fantastically. And it was so dark. And, and it was just myself, Marie, uh, Jared were in the room. And, and Eliza, she, but she, her character had just left. And it was just a moment, and, and Marie's acting was incredible. That, that I mean, it's always incredible. But that day, you know, <laughs> she she just she just looked deep into my into my soul, and, and you know, I just felt Lincoln there, and, and it was just it was just a great scene for me, you know, and just listening to her, and, and then feeling you know what my character had been through, and then he finally speaks, you know, and, and lets it all, and the cat out of the bag that I understood everything. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, at Jazzy B nineteen ninety nine wants up, to know. Jazzy B? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you were offered a, a a professional soccer role, would you take it? Football. Yeah. I'm British. People don't know. People don't know. He was he was really good I, when he was young. I was like, no, 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 no. Um, I mean, no. I mean, I you know, football, soccer is it was a passion when I was younger. Um, it was something that I I love, and I I wake up at 4 a.m. because of the time difference to watch the English Premiership. Um, so you know every you know, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, I'm up at 4 a.m., 7 a.m., and 9 a.m. I think at different kickoffs. 
Um, that time has passed. Uh, my legs probably wouldn't be able to take it right now. Um, the hundreds hard enough. You know, filming that show is physical <laughs> right. enough. You know, so uh, sure. I will. I I found a new love in acting, and and that's something that I'm going to continue. Okay. Um, Speaking of your loves, Audrey Law 0334 wants to know: Have you ever thought about dating a fan? Insists that it's not her asking. <laughs> sure. I'm asking yeah. For a sure. Friend. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> She's asking for a friend. Um, I I like I read all my tweets. Every single one. Every single one this of them. This guy. <laughs> and you are beautiful people. You are really beautiful people. So yes, of course. Um, you know, it's 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 not about who you are, what you are, or anything like that. It's you know, if, if you've got a connection, you've got a connection. All right. Every single fangirl right now is swooning. <laughs> I right? bet I could put money down right now. Every single fangirl that's watching us right now is like, oh, find, a connect, find a connection. <laughs> find a connection. Find a connection. If we meet up, do you have one more? My let's, last let's one. Okay. Real quick, Marisol, twelve thirty-eight. Uh, she actually asked if what superhero would you play, but I asked you that in the other interview, so that's somewhere else. White or dark chocolate. I don't think it's a metaphor. I think it's legitimate. It's just a uh, white or dark chocolate. Which do you prefer? Ooh. I love dark chocolate. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and especially because somewhere out there, they, they, they insist that it's healthy for you. Yeah. So somewhere out there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just being good to my body. Yeah, chocolate sure. for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate for lunch. Chocolate for dinner. I'm eating three healthy meals a day. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I have three questions, Come and then out. we can go into predictions because I want to know what your guys' predictions after yeah. seeing that preview. Um, one, was it hard to learn the grounder language? Yes. Uh, David J. Peterson is an incredible genius who worked on Game of Thrones, um, and he created an incredible language that is real. It's not just gobbledygook, and so you kind of want to do that justice. Uh, Adina, who plays Indra, is incredible at it. Yeah, uh, I was listening Alicia, to Alicia, who plays Lexa, mm -hmm. also has a lot to do. Um, so <clears throat> it's tough, but uh, we get through it. Um, I mean, I have so many questions. Yeah. Uh, Pick your best ones. I know, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll keep them short. We can do them all. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> um, how did you prepare for the Reaper role since it was such a different experience acting wise than uh, Lincoln is the, the Reaper role was was a was a compromise um, to be honest I, I wanted to um, keep it very real and and very raw and wanted to keep Lincoln there mm -hmm. um, and the powers that be decided that they wanted Lincoln to be gone uh, and they wanted just pure animalistic monster um, so he was a compromise uh, from from both camps and uh, that's how he was created that's mm. awesome because I remember we were talking about the after show where it was like oh there goes Lincoln eating a guy <laughs> yeah it was it was tough it was, it was tough. I still, I've still got scars from from straining at those chains and things like that uh. that was that was that was again a lot more research again on, on various things I think one of my predictions was that you were going to eat Octavia the fans didn't like that one very much <laughs> they were so mad at you and I was like whoa it's just a prediction relax yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. last two um, most embarrassing moment on set either for you or someone else um, there's a lot. Um, I'll, two quick ones. Um, <laughs> episode one, season two. Um, I literally pulled my hamstring the very first take, the what? very first shot of the very first day oh. on season one, and my hamstring was in agony. So all those action scenes where Lincoln was running through the water to try and save Octavia when he heard a scream, I was in absolute agony. Oh, oh no! Absolute agony. And we shot it and shot it and lots, lots of various different things. And then there's a bit where I run off and, and, and didn't even make didn't even make the screen, didn't even make the show, um, where I say, look, I'll be back. I'm going to go and get some bugs for you to eat or whatever. <laughs> and as I run off, I'm running through the water. And just as I ran past camera, I fell flat on my face, uh. completely submerged under the water. Oh, I was geez. gone. And uh, uh. they didn't even catch it on camera, so it's not even in the bloopers. So, uh, <laughs> but it was a hot day, so I felt good. And then um, I, I shot a scene with Marie. And uh, we were walking along and um, the camera was right on us and we were being really like stoic and really powerful. You know, she's a she's a warrior princess and I'm, I'm Lincoln and, uh, and she stacked it. She tripped up and she was like. <laughs> 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 and she held it. She was professional, but I was just like. <laughs> 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 we'll go again. We've got to go again. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't hold it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a school girl. Once we start getting the giggles on set, that's hard. Do um, yeah. you guys get the giggles a lot? Henry Ian Cusack is a child. He, he, <laughs> play, he plays Kane so straight, so powerful, and he's such a well-respected, talented actor. He is one of the funniest people you've ever met. 
Nice. Incredible. Good to know. We have a lot of laughs on on on, uh, on set. You know, whether, whether it be Devin Bostick and and Chris Larkin to Richard Harmon. You know, plays Murphy. He, no, he's funny. He's hilarious. I, you know, such in Jared. Everyone's everyone's hilarious. I, I I'm trying to name the whole cast basically because I want to get everyone out. It's like an <laughs> page, stuff in speech. Page is page out. is hilarious. You know, every everyone's in there. You know, so um, it really is a great family, and I'm very blessed to be a part of this. So last question before we go to predictions yes. is. Um, What's it gonna take to get Lindsay Morgan on the show? <laughs> oh, I knew he was gonna ask that. I knew it. Do? I, I, I mean, I'll write an album. I, I'll do it. I, I think I it might. Today, it might it. have to take. It might take an album. Yeah. Um, oh, if you write an album, and I mean, I think she's still in Canada at the moment. <laughs> but when she comes down, I have no doubts that she will be popping in. Yay. I hope because, so. Yeah. That is another woman who is just beyond words. I mean, she's she's a beautiful girl. She's talented, mm. and you, I think girls around the, the world are just like, I, I, I just hope she's got bad breath or she's horrible. She's a <laughs> bitch. I hope she's a bit. No, the most annoying thing is she's incredible. She has a great personality. She's funny. She's hilarious. She's a joker. She's, wow. I, and and she's got the she's got the whole cast saying y'all. Because she's she's from Texas or oh, whatever. Nice. So, so I didn't she's, know that. That's now in my vocab. Is I'm, I constantly say, y'all don't even know. Did I just say y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. So she she's an incredible girl, and hopefully you do get to get her into into the studio because that'll be uh, that'll be fun. Well, we love Raven. We're gonna keep trying. She's so, a uh, ball of energy, an absolute ball of energy, and and. I've got nothing but good, good words. Should we say. predict nice. some things? Do you yes, want to go first? Do you want to go first? <laughs> I'm going to predictions. I, I want to predict. And now, <gasps> you're after you Buzz now. TV. I love the flashing lights. All right, guys, quick round of predictions. Um, Ben. Yeah, you're going to have to go first, Ben, because I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say two. Uh, number one is going to be Bellamy's not going to die. They show him strung up. He, there's no chance they're going to kill Bellamy. There's just I not, not even 1%. Um, in my opinion. And then the other prediction would probably have to be that Lexa will die before the end of the season and Octavia will take over as the warrior princess. Nice. Though it's going to kill me because I actually love Lexa now. Yeah, I'm on the same boat. I feel like Lexa's going to die within the end of the, the season and either Octavia or someone's going to end up taking her role. Or there's going to be an all-out war because they're like, no, she's gone and someone else wants it. Like, because I feel like Indra's probably going to be Lincoln no. doesn't even get a look here. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. I'm not there yet. But no, I feel like Indra, after having Octavia as her, her right hand, you know, I feel like she's going to be like, that's fine. I think Octavia could do it. And I feel like the grounders are going to be really upset of having a sky person as their commander. And I'm rooting <laughs> for Lincoln to uh, get back out, get back into rehab, say, uh, be with yeah, Octavia, and grounding. have beautiful little grounder babies together. Yeah. Done. Nice. Oh, <laughs> groundlings. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, now that you mentioned uh, Lincoln being a compromise, or grounder Lincoln being, or Reaper Lincoln being a compromise, now I think that he's gonna keep somewhat of his senses. He's gonna go back to the camp, let everyone know what happened, and it's gonna be a big ordeal. Yeah. Um, also, that uh, Monty and Jasper are going to save Bellamy. Yes. That's gonna yeah, because be they're gonna find out about it. Right. So, yeah. uh, Ricky, anything you could tell us? I just wanna say you guys are not ready for what's gonna happen. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't no. say that. It is incredible. Um, and I think Lincoln's going to develop superpowers, and you're going to find out that he, he can fly and he has super Oh strength, my gosh. Um, because of the radiation oh. of Earth, and yeah, he's going to be a superhero. I had the greatest Jeez. idea. Nice. They should have a red drink and call it the Flying Lincoln. Done. Ooh. <laughs> we can make that. Can Let's totally make, that. make that. We're hitting the bar after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, now that predictions are done, that'll wrap us up. Um, I know, I know. I don't want to go. <laughs> you don't need I don't to. You go. can be. You can just stay. be part of the panel can forever. Can I stay? The couch looks co it looks cozy. <laughs> I can Super stay. Comfy. Can I see you next week? Yes. yes. You can. Yeah. Yes. I'll bring Lindsay. I'll bring Lindsay. Ah, <gasps> uh, dude. <laughs> You're we, welcome anyway. You, you, know, you go red as soon as I say her name. I didn't say yeah, her name. Like, get out you, of here. You're gonna have to put her on that side of the table. <laughs> oh my god, this is ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> come on. Right. I respect her professionally. Okay. Me too. Me too. You're so. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'd really like to thank thank Ricky Whittle for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Really thank awesome you. pleasure. Uh, and so tell us, tell our fans where they can find you. Um, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Mr. Ricky Whittle or Instagram, just Ricky Whittle. 
Awesome. Uh, and for the rest of you panelists, starting with Alexis. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at atorres890. That's A-T-O-R-R-E-S 890. And Mr. Ben Bateman. I am Ben Bateman Media across all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, the whole, the whole bit. Follow these people. They're awesome. Ah, nice. Thanks. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, it helps us get guests just like this great gentleman right yeah, here. Yeah, seriously. New best uh, friend right here. Oh, yeah. Besties. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening, and stay grounded. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. Take care. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.